Welcome to this answer explanation video for subtract two fractions and subtract from whole amounts. This video will talk through the answers to the subtract two fractions and subtract from whole amounts worksheet and have a look at some of the tricky bits. Question one, use the images below to help you calculate the subtraction. We have 19 tenths subtract seven tenths. So we need to work out the answer. We have two images. The first image represents one whole, but we can see that it's been split into 10 equal parts. And the second image represents the nine tenths to make 19 tenths in total. To find the answer, we can cross out seven of those tenths as you'll be able to see on the screen now. And that will leave us with 12 tenths as our answer. So our denominator has stayed the same throughout the calculation. It's just our numerator that has changed. Question two, match the correct answer to the calculation. 11 sixths subtract nine sixths. We have an image there to support us as well. Like in the first question, it has 11 sixths. So it has our first fraction represented. So we could cross out nine of those sixths. We could also use our knowledge of how to calculate the answer to this kind of question. We know that our denominator is going to stay the same. So we know our answer is going to be sixths. We can then have a look at the numerators and have 11 subtract nine, which leaves us with two. And that's one of our answers. Question three, put an X next to the calculation represented by the bar model. And we have calculation A or calculation B as our answer. To work out which one it is, I'm going to look at the bar model and write down what I can see. So I can see I have three holes. Each of those holes is split into four, so it's split into quarters. So I can start by having a look at the calculation. So we said that we have three holes, and then we're subtracting. The parts which have been crossed out represent what we're subtracting, and we're subtracting one, two, three, four, five quarters. And that has left us with seven quarters. So my next step is to have a look at my options. I have A, three subtract six quarters equals nine quarters, or B, three subtract five quarters equals seven quarters. And that's what I have there. So the one that we need to put an X next to is going to be calculation B. Question four, circle the correct calculation or calculations, there might be more than one. We have A, B and C. I've written down the start of each of those calculations because we're going to work out the answers and then compare them to the answers we've been given. So let's start with A, two subtract six sevenths. We need to work out the equivalent fraction for two holes. So two times seven is 14. That represents our hole number two. And we're subtracting six sevenths, which equals eight sevenths. So we will come back to this one in a moment to convert it back to a mixed number. For calculation B, we have four subtract five eighths. So eight times four is 32 eighths. Subtract five eighths. And that will give us 27 eighths. And then calculation C, we already have our whole number represented as an improper fraction, so we could work it out and we get 13 sixths. Okay, calculation A and B, the answer has been given as a mixed number. So we can have a look at converting them back into a mixed number. It's an improper fraction, so the numerator is bigger than the denominator. That means this number represents one whole plus a fraction. I know that one whole is the same as seven sevenths. So our seven sevenths represents the one, and then I will have one seventh left over. So already my calculation is different, the answer is different than what is on the page. So we'll have a look and check the others as well. 27 eighths, again, this represents more than one whole plus an additional fraction. I know that 27 divided by eight will give me three wholes, and then there will be three eighths left over. And C, our answer was already given as an improper fraction, so we can leave that one. So calculation C, we got the same answer, so we can circle that one. 
and then calculation B, we also got the same, so we could circle this one. And it's just calculation A where we got one and one seventh, whereas on the question it says two and one seventh. Question five, which calculation below is the odd one out? Explain your reasoning. We have A, six subtract seven eighths, B, six subtract 15 eighths, and C, 40 eighths subtract seven eighths. Our first job then is to complete the answer to each calculation. So we'll start with calculation A. I'm going to work out what six is as an improper fraction. So thinking of my six holes in terms of how many eighths that would be. And to do that, I'm going to do six times eight, which is 48 eighths. And I can then subtract seven eighths from that. So my denominator stays the same. And 48 subtract seven is 41. Calculation B, six subtract 15 eighths. So it's going to be the same. Six times eight is 48. So six holes is equivalent to 48 eighths. We're subtracting 15 eighths. And our answer will be again in eighths because our denominator stays the same. And that's going to be 33 eighths. Final calculation, we already have an improper fraction. So we could just work it out from here and the answer will be 33 eighths. So looking at my three answers, I can see that calculation A is the odd one out because the answer is 41 eighths, whereas B and C both have an answer of 33 eighths. Question six, use the digit cards to complete this calculation. You can use each card more than once. So we have nine, six, four, and 13. And then we only have one numerator given to us, which is 19. Thinking about this carefully, we will need to make sure that our denominator is the same throughout the calculation. And we need to think about 19 as our starting point. What can we subtract from 19 that we have in those digit cards to place here? So there's going to be more than one answer to this calculation, but I'm just going to talk you through one of them. I know that I can subtract um, 13 from 19 and I'll be left with six and I can use those because I have 13 and six and we can use each digit card more than once. So we now need to pick one of those cards for our denominator. I think I will choose four. So our calculation could be 19 quarters subtract 13 quarters equals six quarters, but equally you could have put ninths as the, bottom, as the denominator you could have reused sixths and put those in. So there's lots of different ways to do that calculation. This is just one example. Question seven, Arfan has an improper fraction. He subtracts it from a whole number and gets a fraction less than one as his answer. Daisy says, I think Arfan's calculation is 36 ninths subtract 27 ninths. Do you agree with Daisy? Explain your answer. So a way that we could decide whether we agree with Daisy is by completing her calculation. So we have 36 ninths subtract 27 ninths. Our answer is going to be in ninths because the denominator stays the same throughout the calculation. And 36 subtract 27 is nine. I know that if the numerator and the denominator are the same, that means it's equal to one. Let's check the question again. Alphan has an improper fraction. He subtracts it from a whole number and gets a fraction less than one as his answer. So the answer to Daisy's calculation is nine ninths or one whole. So now we need to explain whether we agree with Daisy. I do not agree with Daisy because the answer is equivalent to one whole. Arfan's answer is a fraction less than one. So Daisy's calculation cannot be correct. That was a video explaining the answers to the subtract two fractions and subtract from whole amounts worksheet from Classroom Secrets. For more worksheets, go to classroomsecrets.co.uk and for a video tutorial on the same step, go to kids.classroomsecrets.co.uk. Thanks for watching.